Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. This video is going to be about discus, specifically medication and even more specifically worming. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to decide whether you need to worm your discus, when you should do it and how often you should do it, and the different types of medication that are available and what they do. And I'll take you through some products that I use or have used in the past and a new one that we're going to use today. Today's one I'm going to be using is the Absolute Warmer Plus from Cloverleaf. It's not one I've used before, but it's one that I know a lot of people in the hobby have used and it comes with some great recommendations. This particular one was actually supplied to me. It's not a sponsored video or anything like that. I did want to try it on my own, um, but I got a bit of a care package from our guys Absolute recently. So, perfect opportunity to try it out. Before we jump into all that though, a bit of admin. If you're new here and you like this kind of fishy content, please consider clicking the subscribe button down below. It really helps me out. Leave me a comment, let me know what kind of medications you're using or you're interested in using or want to know more information about. And maybe we can talk about it further. You can join me on, I do live streams most Fridays at 9 o'clock UK time. Or you can check out my website and get some merch or some fish food or all those good things but otherwise let's get on to the video so we're talking wormer and worms today um most fish have worms they live in their gut they're more than happy with them they don't upset them too much especially wild fish um but we want to keep them down to a level where they're not becoming an irritant or becoming a problem you might buy fish from a perfectly reputable breeder and then find out later that they've got worms they can be introduced all manner of ways, whether it's from different fish or even the same fish from different regions or um, completely separate fish that they'll introduce worms that will be more problematic to one breed of fish than another. Specifically, I'm going to be talking discus today, but it kind of applies to all fish. We're, the aim is to make sure that the worms, not necessarily to eradicate them, but get them down to a problem, uh, a problem-free environment. Whereas if they do have some worms, they're not causing issues. So the first big question is when should I worm my fish? So if you're doing some research on the internet as to when you should worm your fish, you'll find two camps of people that are fairly entrenched in their views. One is only when you see signs of worms, and the other is regularly, like clockwork, whether it's monthly, every two or three months, whatever it might be. These two camps will not agree with each other that the other one's right or that make any concessions. I kind of want to sit on the fence on this one because I used to be in the camp that was only when you see worms, but now I'm firmly in the camp of fairly regularly. So the reason I switched camps is because I'm not very good at telling when my fish have worms. I missed the signs. I was missing the signs and the fish were becoming too far gone to be able to save properly. The time I was spotting the features or spotting the issues of worms, it was much harder to address it. So that's why, and I, I think I'm a fairly good aquarist. I had to spend a lot of time with my fish and I was still missing all the signs. Yeah, it's my fault, but there must be plenty of people out there in the same boat as me. Therefore, that's why I'm more likely to recommend the, the regular worming. The signs that you are looking for if you want to be in the other camp are a fish that's eating but not putting on weight or losing weight. Um, with discus specifically, it'll be the, the head will become pinched and thin. Um, you might see, you might actually see worms in the aquarium. If you get a microscope out and check through the poop, we can see some worms in there. Um, but it's generally the, the thinning out of a fish or the not growing of a fish. The medications that we use to treat worms will also treat things like gill flukes and other parasitic things. Um, so you might see a fish flashing where it's kind of swimming along quite happily and it'll just go whoosh or it'll rub up against something. Something's irritating it. So that's another thing to look out for. So as I say, I'm in the other camp where I now treat fairly regularly, probably once every three months. I try and do it like kind of four times a year now. Um, because I was a bad aquarist and I lost fish because I wasn't warming or I didn't catch it in time. That's me. Make your own decision though. I'm not here to tell you what's right and what's wrong. In terms of types of warmer, I'm using the Absolute Warmer Plus today. That's a Flubendazole based medication. The other main one you'll get is a Levamisole. Um, I prefer the Flubendazole one purely because that's the one that I have most experience with. So I've used it before, kind of know how harsh it's going to be and know what to expect. Not to say that the other Levamisole based ones are any different. I think the main differences, and please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong about this, I think the main differences are the Flubendazole one will be a kind of one hit treats all. It'll get rid of the eggs of the worm um, or any parasites rather, whereas the Levamisole one kind of 
knocks out the worms so as the they're kind of I don't think it kills them straight away, but it knocks them out to the point where they can be excreted from the fish and then they don't survive without the host. Um, it doesn't treat the eggs of the worms or the parasites, so you need to do a follow-up second dose to get the eggs that hatch after you've treated the first dose, if that makes sense. So, in general, flubendazole based medicines, one hit. Levamisole based medicines, two hits. There will also be considerations you need to make for what else you might be keeping in your tank. So, for instance, the packet here, it recommends that you don't use this if you're treating a tank that contains stingrays, young fry, shrimp, snails, and any crustaceans or mollusks. Um, so always check the type that you're using and what you can use it for. So I'm fine in here because I don't have any of those things, so we should be good to go. All the wormers will come with detailed instructions. I particularly like this cloverleaf one because it does take you through um, the dosage. So for instance, it says here, add one milliliter per 100 gallons or 454 liters of aquarium water and they include a little spoon. Dissolve the required amount of Absolute Warmer Plus into a container of aquarium water, shake vigorously for a minute and then distribute evenly across the surface of the fish tank. Perfect. As ever, I'm going to throw away the instructions. I'm going to dose my sump because that's one of the benefits of having a sump is you can put it in there. The sump pump will do all the mixing for me and then distribute it evenly throughout the display tank. If you do have a sump, remember to include the water volume of your sump in your dosage calculations. It does say if you run a UV um, system to turn off your UV for 48 hours while this is doing its thing as well. I have just shy of 700 litres in here, so it's kind of one and a quarter of these little spoons. So one level spoonful is one milligram or milliliter. There is a volume calculator on the back of the packet. If you don't want to do any maths, check out the aquariumadventures.co.uk website. There's a calculator on there as well. Just type in the dimensions of your tank and it'll give you a rough water volume. Remember to take account for any stones, rocks, ornaments, substrate, all that kind of thing. <laughs> Quite often people get very wrong when measuring their tanks. So I'm sure I've made a video about that somewhere that you can check out. As I have a sump down here, I'm just going to add it to the second to last chamber where my heaters live and my CO2 reactor. That will then mix in there, flow over into the pumping section and pump it straight back into the display tank and distribute it nice and evenly. One of the many benefits of a sump. And that is pretty much it. So my main recommendations would be once you do this, don't go away for the weekend. Do it on a time where you've got some time to spend with your fish. Just make sure everything's going okay. Be ready to do some big water changes just in case you have cocked up the measurements or something like that. Read the packet that you're, or the dosage instructions that come with the particular medication that you're using. Quite often you'll see on the internet people will buy bulk pure levamisole eh, or something like that. It's commercial medications like this, it's not the pure ingredient, it's already it's mixed specially and then they work out the dosage. So you can't use the dosage for kusuri to do your cloverleaf dosage, for instance. It really is pretty safe. It's very easily done. It's only taken me a couple of minutes to sort this out. Set a reminder on your phone or something like that to do it once every month, two months, three months. I go for three months and you're kind of good to go. I know the arguments against are about preventative medication um, and they are sound. So like I say, I'm not here to tell you who's right and who's wrong. I just, I think it's safer for me and my fish to do it this way because I can use it as a bit of a clean out, as a flush, make sure everyone's happy. Like I say, I've seen my fish in the last week do a couple of flashes. So I know that as well as doing the warming, I'll be doing anything to do with gill flukes or anything like that that they might be having trouble with as well. That'll get rid of that completely. And it's a bit of a, a body flush. It gets everything back to a big reset button, back to health and gets them nice and vibrant and active again. So I hope this video was of some use to you. If it has been, please let me know in the comments. Let me know what your medication routines are and tell me if you think I'm wrong or you've got any better advice. Just let me know. We'll have a discussion. Um, other than that, thank you for joining me. If you have enjoyed this kind of thing, please click that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.